Hello, hello. Wow, this just feels amazing, this retreat, I've got to say. <laughs> We've had some amazing retreats with, you know, healing and sickness and holy relationship and divine providence. And it's like, they, whatever, we, whatever the seeming problems of the world, we're always pointing to the truth and we always go to the expansiveness. But it's like we're starting at the expansiveness and extending further with this retreat. It feels amazing. Quantum expansion, it's so wonderful. And tomorrow's movie is absolutely going to blow your socks off and the commentary with it, and uh, I'm not going to give away anything in this moment. I'm, try I'm just holding myself back, trying to contain myself. <laughs> I'm actually going to explode, I think. <laughs> this, is, this is all going to be like a mind-blowing experience, really. This isn't going to be something else. So I really encourage you to give yourself completely to this weekend. Um, you know, really stay off any of the social medias, and if you've got any engagements, you know, cancel them. Just be here. Be here completely. There's an opportunity, really, for, for a real mind expansion and a very big heart opening. And we've experienced this on these online retreats before. Somehow, in my mind, it's almost like the previous ones of culminating in this one or something. There's something about this. So just really invite you to be here completely with us. So, yeah, and we just felt to start off this uh, amazing retreat with the incredible Netta Bowen. She's here in the studio mm -hmm. <laughs> and singing a very expansive song, uh, God is the love in which I forgive. That wonderful course lesson. Isn't that great? God is the love in which I forgive. Mm. Take it away, Netta. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi. Wow, this is my first online life retreat. Really great. Technology is amazing. Yeah, so thank you. I'll be sharing my song. Uh, it's on my new album called The Light Has Come. Um, it has 16 songs, all inspired by A Course in Miracles. Um, you can check all of them out on my website, netaboyne.com. And for now, I'll sing one of my favorites for you guys on request of David. Um, God is the love in which I forgive. So, yeah, you can turn it on. <laughs> what fear is produced return in the mind to God God is the love God is the love in which I forgive myself God is the Forgiven me, forgiveness is the means by which I will recognize my innocence. Never love of 
God can reach down to me and raise me to my own. feels expansive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Netta. It's beautiful. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, well, we might give it straight over to David. I want to kick it off. And, sure, yeah. sure. Welcome, everyone. Thank Yay. you for joining in. Thank you all. Love you all. <laughs> yeah, they were just telling me, I, when I got here to the studio, Michael was saying that uh, Today is International Kiss Kiss Day, and I feel like we just got a kiss from God uh, to start off these two a first two hour session. We got a kiss from God of because it's so beautiful to bring in the presence of God at the beginning, you know. And, and imagine if we just do that with our our lives every morning, every night, every day. We just we just invoke the presence of God's love uh, that we felt through that song and. And we just stay in that presence, and it's that simple. There's, there's no methodology. There's no. You, you, if you could just desire that with all your heart, you don't even know. To, need to know metaphysics. You don't even know the course in miracles. All you have to do is invoke the presence of love, the presence of God, and then just, as Saint Augustine said many centuries ago, he said, "Love." and do what you will. Mm. It was such a, pre a profound teaching. And it's so beautiful that we have these interactive online uh, opportunities, online retreats. Uh, I see we've got a whole group. All the strawberries are there. <coughs> Look at the strawberries. <laughs> we ha are so grateful that we have these online retreats and and we started doing them in January, and actually we have covered quite a few topics. And so the topic for this weekend is quantum expansion. And I think you'll see pretty soon, pretty quickly as we go into this, is it's going to be really deep. We're going way down the rabbit hole uh, this weekend. And we're going to, we're going to be going into realms and, and areas, I think, Maybe for some of you it will be the first time that, that you've heard some of these uh, ideas. All, even people who study the Course for years sometimes block out some of the deeper ideas because they're just not ready for them. And then when they're ready, whenever they're ready, they start to come in. And, and it's so beautiful too that again, all of you have written in, a lot of you have written in questions and we love the practicality of of the questions coming in and we all go over them and we read them and we keep updating our list all the way up to the beginning and even if you write questions in uh, na tonight or tomorrow we'll still get those questions because we like to really know what's on your heart and and what what the issues are that you're dealing with and I went through them 
this afternoon a couple times, and I, I saw uh, Jocelyn Bailey had, uh, it actually was, was a prayer, and, and to me I thought of all these questions, that's the best way to start off, a song, a kiss from God, and now a prayer. I th can't think of a better way to start, start it all off, but Jocelyn wrote, the prayer of my heart is that I continuously, unswervingly, and without compromise, allow my mind to be unwound straight into the heart of God, where I am and where I belong. And some passages came to me too, which I feel like these are just passages from uh, the text and the workbook, but uh, I'll just read them to you. And, and to me, this is like a, a very deep prayer. And that's really what we're going into for this weekend. So these are the words of Jesus, actually, from chapter 31, the last chapter in A Course in Miracles. Let us be still an instant and forget all things we ever learned, all thoughts we had, and every preconception that we hold of what things mean and what their purpose is. Let us not remember our own ideas of what the world is for. We do not know. Let every image held of everyone be loosened from our minds and swept away. Be innocent of judgment, unaware of any thoughts of evil or of good that ever crossed your mind of anyone. Mm. Now do you know him not, but you are free to learn of him and learn of him anew. Now is he born again to you, and you are born again to him without the past mm. that sentenced him to die, and you with him. <coughs> now is he free to live as you are free, because an ancient learning passed away and left a place for truth to be reborn. And from Lesson 189 in the workbook, Today we pass illusions as we seek to reach to what is true in us and feel its all-embracing tenderness, its love, which knows us perfect as itself, its sight, which is the gift its love bestows on us. We learn the way today. It is as sure as love itself to which it carries us. For its simplicity avoids the snares, the foolish convolutions of the world's apparent reasoning, but serve to hide. Simply do this, be still, and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is, all concepts you have learned about the world, all images you hold about yourself, Empty your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false, or good or bad, of every thought it judges worthy, and all the ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past has taught, nor one belief you ever learned before from anything. Forget this world, forget this course, and come with holy, empty hands unto your God. And the gateway into this deep presence that we're all joined together in, to go into this deep presence, is, is the prayer of our heart. That's, that's where everything starts. We, we are praying for this. 
beyond even the words that we speak. It's our heart crying out to remember the love that we are and to remember the love that God is. And we have so many opportunities, but we're going to really take this opportunity because as I look through the questions and as I listen to the conversations that go on in the world, the conversations are about people and places and things. The conversations are about memories and also about ambitions and goals for the future. And the conversations of the human race are really the outpicturing or the projections of the ego. I think it's important at the beginning to be reminded that, that the ego invented words. That, that in heaven and in pure I am presence there aren't any words, it's just pure stillness. And so we pray that the Spirit uses the words to take us beyond the words. And tonight we are starting off, I have to just say again, I think the most important thing for me of these online retreats is that really as I look around in this room, I see all around me in this room, I see those that have really given their life over to God. And uh, you know, I, if, we, if I just look around and every person that, that my eyes rest on, I see that they've gone through uh, an undoing, an unwinding, a, a, a listening, an inner listening. And I would say it's, it's like in the movie The Matrix, you know, where, um, where Neo basically has to get unplugged from, <laughs> he's got things plugged into him and his back of his neck and everything, and he has to get unplugged. And then after he gets unplugged, he kind of gets flushed down. It looks like a giant toilet <laughs> to me, but he gets kind of flushed down and he gets unplugged. And as, and I, as I look around the room, I, I am seeing, I'm surrounded by a group who have been unplugged. And then, <coughs> then the, the inward journey really begins to take off because um, I see the people around me have had had jobs, they've had careers, families, they've had uh, many things that are very common in the world and yet when the, they were called by God, they've answered the call and they've, they have given themselves over to be used mm -hmm. and to trust that they will just have whatever they need, whatever they need will be provided, whatever they need to be shown will be shown to them and to me this is, is very important. It's almost like that is one of the conditions towards opening to this deep quantum expansion experience. There has to be a let go. You have to have a desire for this experience, a, literally a determination for this experience, for it to come into awareness. I was saying in the, in the book, I, I wrote a book, uh, Quantum Forgiveness, Physics Meet Jesus and uh, it's got seven different movies, uh, scenarios in it, in which we go very deeply into this quantum expansion experience. And I, even that, I say I wrote the book. Actually, I'm just a talking mystic and I don't write anything. And uh, to honestly, I just talk and I've been talking for 20 oh, years. Yeah. Kirsten's there with the strawberries and like, she will attest to that. Like, you really talk a lot. She's heard me talk, <laughs> maybe for half of those. 20 years or something, but, but anyway, they record my talks and then they make books out of them and, and there was a lot of talks and Deanna, who's with us here in the studio, she basically listened to I don't know how many speakers and she was digging out, looking for all the gold nuggets of um, actually many, many, many talks, movie talks and things. And then uh, and there was a few other collaborators, wasn't there Mel? Melanie. Melanie. And Sarah, Sarah. really, uh, yeah. yeah, Melanie, Sarah, and Deanna yeah. uh, pulled everything together and amazingly it was flowing and it got written and so, it, yeah, it, I don't write books, but it's spectacular. I, I was having fun reading it today. I, 
get to read my own book. Like, wow, that's good. My, <laughs> I'm thinking, wow. I was having a quantum expansion just reading the book, <laughs> sitting there with my, that cat ISO and just, whoa, wow, wow. And then I talked to Michael and Michael was like, well, I've been going through it too. We didn't even know. We were both going through this, the book together. But what it is, is, is we are going into an experience where we're starting to see that all the things of the world, the, the images and the people and the stars and the planets, and the jobs, and the mother nature, and everything we perceive in the cosmos are all effects. And they're effects of an unreal cause. Yes, that's right. God did not create this world, and God didn't create time and space, and God didn't create the body. These are all projections or effects of an unreal cause. So, it's kind of funny when all of our conversations, the human conversations are about, did you hear what, did you hear what they say? Oh my God, I can't believe it. Did you see that, did you see that headline on the, oh my God. You know, all this chitter chatter that is the human condition is just a chatter about effects that aren't really there. It's really much ado about nothing, Shakespeare called it, and it's much chatter about nothing. Remember, God didn't create words either, so there's all this chattering going on. It's like a buzz that God doesn't even know about and doesn't even hear. And the Holy Spirit hears the prayers of our hearts, which really is to wake up from this dream and come home and, and remember heaven. And yet, how precious this is where we can come together and we can begin to start to move from the chatter about these effects. And, and I know that for a lot of you, you know, this is what seems to be, you could say, well, it's, you can call it chatter, David, and you can call it just a bunch of images and effects, but there's some pretty heavy-duty issues I'm dealing with on a daily basis with these effects, you call them. And I would say that my prayer for this weekend is that you come with me so deeply into the mind that you start to have a feeling, an experience of the power of true causation. Because God is the love, God is the cause, God is the creator of reality, and everything that is, lives and moves in God. Uh, Christ, our true identity, is a perfect idea in the mind of God. And that's the whole point of all this, is if you have the faintest glimmering of that idea of who you are, and therefore who you are in God's mind and, and who God is, then, then this whole weekend will have been very well worth it. It, it just that the faintest glimmering of love is worth everything. And I want to go into this so thoroughly because uh, a lot of spiritual ideas will be brought up and I would say that the majority of ideas in, in most spiritualities are false. Like for example, reincarnation, you know, at the back in the Manual for Teachers of A Course in Miracles, um, the question is posed to Jesus, is reincarnation so? And basically he says it's, it's really not essential to our curriculum. Not only doesn't it have any reality, but it, it's not even essential to our curriculum. And that's a very common belief. Uh, reincarnation is. And so that's what I mean by with the movie I'm going to show and the commentary I'm going to do and the way I'm going to take us down, down, down into the mind so deep, it's going to go much deeper than, than so many commonly held beliefs that hopefully if you can stay with me and just be in a place of, of willingness and surrender, you just will drop into this immense stillness that literally is beyond all concepts and words, beyond all beliefs even. And we're going to watch a movie, we're going to watch a quantum movie this weekend and we're, I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to, I'm going to show one of these online weekends, I'm going to show a, a full-length movie and it is not a short quickie. I'm going to show a two and a half hour movie 
that basically if you watch this movie without my, my commentary, you're probably just going to be scratching your head after the first five minutes. Like, what is he doing? Why would he show me a movie like that? And after the first five minutes, you may be thinking, what is he, what is he up to? And then you're going to have to have a lot of faith because I'm going to show you the full two and a half hour movie. Uh, starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. and we'll run, we'll have a lunch break, you can have lunch, go jogging, meditate, do your yoga poses and all this and that, have some fun and then come back two hours later uh, and I'll show you uh, the rest of it and then we'll have a nice little music surprise and then a music video and then I'll, I'll, I'm going to go into uh, some more commentary. This is the kind of, this movie is such a quantum movie that, yeah, I don't think it, it did too well at the theaters because it's just, it's way beyond its time. It's way beyond its time. And you may say, you know, what, why are you doing this and, and what are you talking about? And I will say, like, how many of you out there have seen um, the movie with uh, Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. How many of you have seen Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? What a movie. I mean, that, that's a quantum movie too. And in that movie, I'll tell you, I went to a movie theater to see that. And I watched that movie and I had the biggest grin on my mouth when I saw that movie because I was saying, whoa. Uh, I, I was thinking, oh, what a teaching movie. I said, uh, the spirit can't wait to get a hold of that and use that as a teaching device. But as I was leaving, I was walking down the aisle. There was a place for the handicapped and, and uh, elderly and so forth. You know, they have the seats that, that are kind of there for, for people with uh, disabilities or so forth. And there was an elderly man, a uh, very old man, who was sitting in there. And as, as I was walking down the aisle, to go out, he was still sitting in his chair and he was saying, that is the worst movie I have ever seen in my entire life. And I mean, this guy was old and, and he's probably a movie lover and he's probably seen hundreds if not thousands of movie. And, and I just smiled again as I was going by because I thought, yeah, well this movie broke a cardinal rule of movies. Because movies are supposed to have what? A beginning and an end. And the way that they made this movie, you left that theater thinking, where did, actually did it begin and where did it end? You know, they wove that thing around so much that you, they used, they bent time um, with that movie. And you walked out of there, and, and it did not follow the rule of movies. You know, that movies have a, a beginning and an end. Forget good end or bad end. It, it just, it left you with this feeling like you didn't really know where the movie started, where you came in on it. You know, it was so kind of circular. And, and that's a quantum movie. Now, the movie I'm going to show you, at least that movie didn't have a beginning and an end. I think with this movie, yeah, it's more than that. Uh, you're, you know, you're going to even wonder, what is the plot? Where is this going? Why is he showing me this movie? What is the purpose of this movie? Because it breaks more than that. It breaks more than the cardinal rule. It breaks all the rules of movies. But that's because it's a quantum movie. That's because Everyone who believes they're a human being and they believe they exist in linear time don't really have a comprehension that, that there really is no such thing as linear time. And even these memories, whether they be from childhood or young adult or adult memories or from past lives or all those things, that people still see their memories in a linear progression and even the memories seem to have a linear progression. And not only that, there seems to be causative characters and causative actions in those memories. Where you were abused, where you were mistreated, uh, where somebody did something to you, or maybe some, it was a love relationship, you found your soulmate, and then boom, 
there, there was a loss or a separation. I remember uh, Kirsten and Jackie were going, doing a lot of past life readings and I remember Kirsten telling me that uh, she had a number of past life readings where it would be, she would always find her soulmate and then there would be some disaster or some parting that would come. As soon as she found her soulmate, in, in a consecutive uh, past life regressions, and so there was this kind of heartbreak of, well, it was so close, and then poof. Uh, but I'm, what I'm saying is, the very fabric and construct of dreams is linearity. And not only linearity, but there's this basic belief in cause and effect relationships. What do I mean by that? Well, if you talk to anybody on the street, they'll say, well, it seems that there's past events that cause your emotions. It seems like there's past events that cause you, shape you to be who you seem to be as a person. The culture you grow up in, the, your parents, your genetics, your DNA, uh, there are so many aspects of the past that seem to determine and shape and so linear time seems to move in one direction. It moves in the direction from past towards the future. And that's like common. That's more as, as common as believing that you're actually breathing air. You know, it's that, it's, it's like a pretty deep assumption, you know. And, and what I'm going to start to show you is that, that God didn't create time, linear time, and that what you believe is this linear progression from past to present to future is also a construct of the ego, and that absolutely none of it is true. And when we talk about science, like a lot of you took physics maybe, you took chemistry in high school and you took physics. Well, if you took physics, you probably read about the principle, for every action there's a reaction. If you looked at chemistry and all the different elements and you combine certain elements and they produce certain reactions, those are all cause-effect relationships. Some of you in, maybe enjoy baking. Uh, I've had many movies I like. There was a Jagla movie that I really liked, How, Can She Bake a Cherry Pie was the name of the movie. But you have to have a, a lot of false cause-effect beliefs to bake a cherry pie because you have to, how long do you leave the pie in the oven? What temperature is the oven? Now, all these, we'll say, causative factors in time and space that are so important in politics, in, in cooking, in culinary activities, in exercise, in nutrition, in physics, any subject you would take in school, junior high, high school, doesn't matter, graduate school, every single subject that you have learned, everything that you've learned of time and space is all riddled with error. And the error is, is this idea that there are causes in form and there are effects in form. And what Jesus is telling us, this is why people have such resistance to the Course, is he's saying, God is the cause, Christ is the effect, God is spirit, Christ is spirit, and the ego is the belief that cause and effect are apart, that God and Christ are apart. It's a fancy way of saying that, that Christ, the Son of God, could leave God. And that's the belief that cause and effect are apart. They aren't together. They aren't simultaneous. They aren't unified. And some of you remember the Bible. If you read the Bible, Jesus says, uh, he said, the Father and I are one. And he explains this in A Course in Miracles, that even though there's two parts to the sentence, they're, you're, they're one in spirit, that, that Christ is not a perfect idea in the mind of God. And that's who we are. But the mind that's asleep can't, has forgotten what spirit is, so even the most famous artists throughout history who have tried to portray God, remember those paintings, wasn't it um, Leonardo da Vinci? 
and a very famous painting, but it was like, it was two men, <laughs> you know. The, God isn't a man, and it was like they were touching, their fingertips were touching, right. remember that one? Yeah. It was like a very famous painting, but, but that would be an example of what, what we would say, anthropomorphizing God, giving human characteristics to God. But it was an artist's representation. God is definitely not a body, and, and doesn't have a body, and doesn't know of bodies. But God is pure abstract love and light, but, but we need to find a way to go from this imagination, false imaginings, back into the heart of God, back into pure spirit. The key thing that we're going to go over throughout the whole weekend, and the whole movie will explore this as well, is because cause and effect are one, because ideas leave not their source. Christ is an idea that could never leave the source, could never leave God's mind. And the ego is a belief that not only is that possible, but it's happened. And that idea of split cause and effect is then projected to the world, and that's what linear time is. It's a projection of the ego's belief that cause and effect are apart. And the only way that you wake up, the only way that you find the holy instant, the only way that you find true and constant happiness is you have to go on a journey to realize that that belief in separate cause and effect is not possible, did not happen, could never be, because it denies that God is one. It denies God, the belief that cause and effect are separate. So, you know, this was quite interesting when I was first doing the course because uh, I actually was, you know, I had been in, you know, grade school and junior high and high school. Then I was actually in, in 10 years of university and, and then when I came to the course and I started reading it, I slowly had this little sneaking suspicion that, that everything that I had ever learned, everything that I had ever learned was completely false. And I was thinking, holy moly, who am I going to talk to about this? Who do you talk to, you know, you, mom, you know there's no cause and effect relationships in the world? <laughs> David, what are you talking about? Are you, you want to have dinner today? You know? <laughs> are you on drugs? Lisa says, are you on drugs? She's putting some words into Evelyn's mouth. She, Maybe she wouldn't say that. No, not to me. I was such a clean, squeaky, clean-cut boy. She would never say such a thing. She, she probably, she probably went around the corner and just went, like you know, uh, David's, he's, he's lost his marbles. He's, she would say it in nice terms. He's not. David just is not playing with all the the, the whole deck of cards. Uh, you know, she had very sweet ways. She was a sweet loving mother, she would not say that I was on drugs, but she would <laughs> say that, that I perhaps was a little loony tunes. <clears throat> and, and, and here it is, I'm reading the Course, and the Course is like resonating big time, huge, big time. Like I've just hit the gold mine, I've hit the mother load of, of all wisdom, and, I, and it's basically telling me, like one point Jesus, he, he uses a phrase, he says, you know, you believe in spurious, cause and effect relationship. So I'm like spurious, I gotta get the dictionary out, what's spurious? You know, they're, they're unreal, they're false. You, you, your whole world is past associations, your whole world is made out, the whole fabric and the fiber and the threads in the perception of the world you see, of the linear world, it is false down to the core. There's not a single shred of reality to perception. And yet, you believe you're in it. You believe you're a part of something that has no reality whatsoever. I mean, even when I would read a lot of thinkers, I, you know, we like free thinkers, we read everything. I love, you know, I would read Deepak Chopra and he'd say, Oh, you, you must open your mind to pure potentiality. And I would be like, pure potentiality? Listen, this weekend, sorry Deepak, if you're tuning in, <laughs> We are going to blow that pure potentiality out of the water because sometimes you talk about pure potentiality as reality and believe me, reality is not potential. <laughs> it's actual. Uh, it's, Amen. 
It's real. It's, it's not a bunch of hypotheticals and that you've got this bunch of energy of hypotheticals and, and that your point of life is to come to that. God is in a potential and Christ is no potential and we're not going to stop at pure potentiality. So, so watch out. Reincarnation, pure potentiality, it's going to be Oh my God, there's oh going to be so God. many ideas this weekend. You're just going to be like, what happened to my yeah. hair? My hair is falling out. I listened to David for two hours for, for the whole weekend and my hair is gone. Hopefully you have a mystical experience too and the whole body <laughs> will go too as well. But this is so deep because, because what it is is, and, and I love your questions, I mean I really love your questions, but the questions, you know, we've been covering a lot of things uh, over the weeks and Muna, Muna, you know, you are just, you are so deep and so metaphysical. I can always count on Muna to write a question that I think, wow, this, this week and it's like at the bottom of Muna's question. No, that's me. Hmm? That's not me. Muna? Muna, that's Mitha. Muna, that's <laughs> the producer put Mitha up. <laughs> We're going quantum. That's all right. There she is, Just she's waving. In the dark. She's pick waving, face. she's like, she's you see her there? There she is. Hello, Muna. I can always... I'm the, Muna puts these quotes on Facebook and I'm the one that's always loving her quotes. Love, 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 love. I always love all her quotes because they're just deep. Muna's like deep into... And I know you've got written a lot of practical things about your relationship with Alistair and, and different things, but actually uh, this is one of the things, this is how Muna ended her question. Um, at the very end uh, she said, and finally since JC controls space and time, what exactly does that mean if the script is written and done with? So this is a question. She's asking if JC controls, Jesus Christ controls space and time, what exactly does that mean if the script is written and done with? So, so we will explore those topics too. The script is written, that's, that's something that comes up. It's, I've talked about it and done many videos and everything, but, but once we move into quantum expansion, we, we will blow past that one too. That, that one's another one that's going to, like pure potentiality, the script is written, it's just going to, we're going to blow past it. Because it really just is, is a, a stepping stone along the way to start, to, it's just a version of um, lesson number seven, I see only the past. That's, that's really all script is written is about, is that early lesson that everything that is perceived through the body's eyes, through the five senses, everything is the past without exception. And some of you know, if you've listened to some of my old tapes on Teacher of Teachers website and different things, you'll hear me sometimes talk about the past past and the future past. And I, I do that because it's a cute teaching device to teach that really the past and the future are the same. They really aren't different. In human awareness they seem to be very different. They seem to be separated by the present moment and the the future seems to be very different than the past. And there's even some metaphors in the, in the course about, about changing your mind and, and making a new future, but those are metaphors too because in the end the past is a defense against the holy instant. The future is a defense against the holy instant. And the present moment is the gateway to eternity. And and in the end, that's why Jesus says, I place my future in the hands of God. That's a workbook lesson. Mm -hmm. He wants you to absolutely surrender all thought of the future because it's keeping you from what is real and what is true. Now, when I looked at this, uh, this weekend too, I, I kind of, I just was really praying for a workbook lesson that would really be helpful. And the workbook lesson that would really serve us to the greatest extent. And what I came up with was workbook lesson number 300. 
And that lesson, oh, I'll switch right to it now here. Here it is. That lesson is only an instant mm -hmm. does this world endure. That's, the, that's what we're going to look at today. Workbook Lesson 300, only an instant does this world endure. And this is going to be a key to our quantum movie because without this lesson, then the movie would seem to make no sense at all. In fact, you know, we, we want you to come to an experience where all movies of this world <laughs> make no sense at all. All movies of the world of linear time cannot really be understood. You can't really come to a grasp or an understanding of anything in linear time. But that's just a leaping off into an experience that's much deeper than linear time. And I'll just read the, the first sentence of this lesson. And the lesson is, only an instant does this world endure. This is a thought which can be used to say that death and sorrow are the certain lot of all who come here. For their joys are gone before they are possessed or even grasped. And then the second sentence is important. That sounds like a pretty dark... All that is saying is, is that <laughs> The, the instant of the ego, it's called the unholy instant, is dark. And everything and everyone within that unholy instant, that ancient unholy instant of separation, everyone will die. It will be death and sorrow are the certain lot that inside this little gap, inside this little instant of time, we'll call it, the unholy instant, that death and sorrow are certain. And joy is gone before they can be possessed or even grasped. Yet, this is also the idea that lets no false perception keep us in its hold, nor represent more than a passing cloud upon a sky eternally serene. That's the most glorious second sentence you could ever have after a first sentence like that. <laughs> So basically, basically, that, that this, this is also the idea that only an instant does this world endure is actually going to be our saving grace. That everything that we perceive as linear time is part of a distraction. And all of our thoughts and all of our mind's effort and energy that we put into linear time is actually taken away from the holy instant. Not in reality, but it's... It's taken our focus away from the now, from living in the now, from, from truly experiencing this instant of freedom. And let me say also that, that if you would think of the unholy instant, that, that the holy instant is actually before it. So that's what Jesus meant when he said, before Abraham was, I am. He was saying, before this unholy instant of time and space and linearity, I am. That, that the I amness precedes, it's actually all that there is. But it actually was, is always there. All we have to do is, is recognize fully that this whole, holy instant is here for us now and that this little blip, this little gap of nothingness cannot hold us back. And we need not put any investment of our mind in this gap of time and space. Now, to do that, that's why we're going to show the movie, because uh, our main character in the movie is, is we'll just say his name, Nemo. <laughs> and, oh, no! <laughs> and they're all going, oh, it's a fish, we're going to see a fish. That's one of my favorite movies, it's everyone's so like... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not going fishing in that way. No, it's, 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 it's going to, the main character is going to have a bunch of scenarios that seem to be all these images and scenes 
and they're very similar to human, the human experience, all types of memories and everything, and yet we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to use those scenes and scenarios to take us beyond them all. Uh, to take us, uh, you know, if you, we can simplify this, is anyone remember that country song, Looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love in too many faces. Searching for love. Searching for love. Lisa knows it. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that a lot. <laughs> so, this is very prophetic, where, you know, that country song, looking for love in all the wrong places, you know, and here we are on International Kiss Day, but uh, I'll tell you, look, if you're looking for love in form, if you're looking for love in time and space, if you're looking for eternal love in what the ego has made, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to be fruitful. Uh, you know, in fact, the Bible says, seek and you shall find. Jesus tells us that the ego's, uh, its main creed is, seek and do not find. And uh, so that song is a good representation of seek and do not find. Look for love in the wrong places and too many faces. Look for love where it isn't and be frustrated, depressed, and then eventually die. You know, uh, that's, that's what, that's the interpretation, that's, that's the interpretation of that country song. <laughs> right. And the thing about it is, everyone who comes to this place has that motive. Because uh, heaven is where love is found, but this place was made as a veil or a covering over heaven. And so when you search for heaven in not heaven, <laughs> uh, it's going to be frustrating. And, and, and this is the same with our, our main character in the movie. He, he will search and search and search and search, but the search always means there's some sense of inadequacy, some sense of lack, some sense of incompletion, uh, some sense of uh, not feeling loved that is the motive behind the search. And it must be that the, this can't be like our real motive. It must be that we've, we've given our powerful mind over to a crazy motive, which is looking for love in the form. And the thing about it is, uh, Jesus had said, the kingdom of heaven is within. He didn't say, look everywhere in the world and try to find the kingdom of heaven. He said, the kingdom of heaven is within. And, and he says in A Course in Miracles, he says, seek not outside yourself, for it will fail, and you will weep each time an idol falls. That's pretty strong, and, and that's, that's just the same theme. He's given us the same theme. So we're going to watch a movie where there seems to be a lot of searching, a lot of scenarios, a lot of attempting to find something, to overcome something, uh, of, maybe overcome a feeling of not being loved, not enough, not worthy, you know, whatever you want to call it. That's, that's going to be very important in our search. And I feel like that's, again, it's a commonality for all of us. We have our panel here. Our panel is, we'll all, we're going to watch the movie tomorrow with you. We're going to go down the rabbit hole together. But also our panel will be here uh, to address a lot of the specific uh, questions. And perhaps, we don't know, but perhaps if we go deep enough down the rabbit hole that these will disappear. You know, that could happen. Uh, because you could actually go down into such a deep experience where you just have a big smile from ear to ear on your face and, uh, and you say, I have no questions. I just, I absolutely have no questions. And, and that would mean that you would have to have gone deep enough down into the holy instant where the, there are no questions and there are no issues. You know, that's, that is the answer. The holy instant is the answer. If somebody asked Jesus and they said, you know, 
uh, on the spiritual journey, what are my next steps? You know, he would probably smile, and in his heart he knows that they're really, all of us have the same next step, actually, and it's the holy instant. That's the only next step, uh, is, is going into the holy instant. But he also knows that the, the mind that believes it's the ego is terrified of love, and, and, and needs a gentle step-by-step -step program. So the Holy Spirit will offer lots of form uh, guidance. Do this, go here, do that, let go of this, um, do, do this, do that. You know, the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit will, will meet the mind where it believes it is, but ultimately it's still going to come down to this holy instant. And that's where that workbook lesson comes in, lesson number 300. Only an instant does this world endure. It's like being convinced that now is all that there is. And salvation, Jesus calls it, which could be the atonement or correction, whatever you want to call it, uh, there's a lot of synonyms in the Course, is, is the simple realization that that the past is gone and, and actually never was, that there, there never was a problem. That's what salvation is. It's in simple terms that there, there never has been a problem. You know, that the mind could have believed there was, but it doesn't mean that it was a reality, that there are no problems in reality. And that's very important for all of us. That's very, very important. We want an actual experience of that. So, I feel so grateful to be with all of you, and I'm looking at the panel here to see if the panel has any, any ideas or thoughts or things coming up, or I'll just continue. <laughs> We've got a microphone over there, and the camera. Okay, hi everybody. Can look into that. Which camera is it? This, okay, there it is. Hi. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Lisa Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot there for a moment. <laughs> no, well, I'm really excited about this. I feel really excited because quantum has always been my favorite thing. I mean, I even had a quantum awakening page and just the whole quantum. And, you know, it's not even the scientific. It's really about the experience. And what David's saying, the, all the mind training... I feel that that's our life. We really are in this quantum experience where we're just really living in the holy instant and not looking back and opening up even this whole session tonight. It's like we're just walking into these new paradigms all the time. And it's always just this fresh, alive experience and feeling the presence of God. So I guess when you're talking about all this and... I'm hearing Jesus talk in the Course and everything's just so precious because it actually is our natural state. And I was even thinking when you were saying that, really time, it's really all the problems are maintaining this self-concept. You know, it's a self-concept versus the self. It's like that self is, self-concept is in time. All problems are a self-concept problem, which is like maintaining this self, you know, constantly constantly trying to maintain this self like for me I know I thought years ago I thought I was a mother I thought I was you know I need to be responsible I was a CEO I was a nurse I I had all these identities I remember when I started reading the course and and it said I was the Christ it's like what and that I'm the light of the world I thought are you kidding me and that I'm not a body you know it was just like yeah, just this whole, like, realization, just yeah, a whole new way of, you know, it was undoing that self-concept of who I thought I was. Like, all my problems were me thinking that I was all these things and maintaining all these things. And just this unwinding of my mind, all those beliefs and letting go of the guilt, so much guilt in maintaining these concepts and pulling away from them and... David said in the beginning, every one of us have, you know, really devoted our lives to God. And it really is devoting our lives to love, to a state of mind. And, 
Yeah, it's just it. Yeah, I just feel so honored to be here, and I know everyone that knows me knows that I love quantum, and yeah. So just I'm excited to see what happens, actually, with no expectation. Wow. You haven't seen the movie. Sure. I haven't seen the movie, so this is exciting, and that's this is supposed to be a big one. You haven't seen it, and you haven't seen it. No, I haven't. Seen and it's it. Diana is one of your favorites. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> top five. <laughs> this one is on my top five. Yeah. It says quantum as a guess. <laughs> so it is exciting. Actually, I haven't seen it for, for a little bit. So I used to watch it all the time, but I haven't seen it for a little bit. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's exciting. And uh, uh, speaking of all things work together for good, I did have that um, on my last day. In France, actually, uh, I I really went into this mystical. I had like actually a wave of emotion come up, and after that, I felt I went into a really deep mystical experience, and I saw that the whole thing was that all things work together for good, but as an experience, and um, and. Uh, and so in that, and so that's why I like it was just so just that feeling that just being I, I was so happy when oh. I came out and and so that's why I like I guess I, I wrote some notes fantastic gathering but this is why like no reason it's not that I've said something it was just an, like it was just in the name of that true experience and uh, the rest was just simply that this actually works oh. it works and it's like and in a way it's kind of like my life is like that movie it's like nothing worked out so to speak in form but everything is truly 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 perfect like i could really it was an experience so i it's really hard to right. uh, to, mm. to to talk about but this is there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> like there's like that there's nothing else so yeah the so honest that's shared perfect. Diana shared a little bit about it, and, and we could say she, in this airport, she had a, a, a quantum, a very quantum experience. But what, what I heard when you were sharing the experience was it was like an experience of all wars have ended in me. Yeah. Uh, I have ended the war. Uh, or as uh, John and Yoko put on the, the, their billboards years ago, war is over if yeah. you want it. And the reason it was a quantum experience was, I think Diana was saying that you might share that there was a, a, a lot of uh, military personnel in uniform there, and then all of a sudden she was just swept up in this huge love just while she was staring at all these people in military uniform, which is, is actually a, a scene that uh, Diana doesn't see. Down here in Mexico and at the monastery and everything, we don't really have a lot ever. of military uh, uniforms, but it was, it, it was a new kind of a scene for you, but then it was what happened after you saw that, that was really the quantum it expansion. Was the, it was just my mind just um, uh, expanded, so just, it was, it was an instant, but my mind expanded, and I felt um, just extreme, it's just love, unconditional love, and that sense of, I've, I'm like, I have, like, it's more like, on one sense, it was I will end the war, but but it was actually I have ended the war, and and there's and it's like from here on, it's just a matter of um, I'll it's just uh, extending the proof of it, and and that and that's all, and um, and so that that was very emotional in a way, but but very, very real. Once again, it was really, really real, and it wasn't even that. Um, it was more real than everything else. It was that a sim there was a simplicity in it, rather than, like, in the way that that's the only thing I can actually do. That's the only thing that's actually possible, and all the everything else, it's act actually impossible to even attempt, and this is a worthy goal and that's possible and it was like emotion it was just as 
it's just rinsing through even just I saw how arrogant to even say I can't just all like all the times that I've I've seen like it was a quantum experience like I've seen I saw many many scenes of me crying at night to myself I can't I can't you picked the wrong one and in that moment it was actually the experience was that is actually it's actually kind of silly in a way and uh, because like I like I said, that's the only thing that, it, like that's the only thing there is that it, I can, I and anyone can as like as the Christ, as the one. So, so that's yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. So so yeah, and it's so beautiful because from here on, it's like every day is just really just. Like I just, I'm just gathering every day that it's it's new and it's just proof only of that that it's like the like it's over the war is over and, uh, and so that's that's that's, <laughs> that's it really ev every face. every <laughs> moment like yeah. just every every moment and again it's and and it is actually it's very simple bec because it is only through desire and the desire only that that's. That's all, like if that's what you want, then that's all we're going to see. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's interesting because I was praying about uh, this retreat and just if there's anything that's coming in that's going to be helpful to share. And um, mm -hmm. I just sort of got whacked on my head and I thought, what? It was like a realization that hit me that I didn't used to be happy, I sort of put on a smiley face. But then I became happier, felt like it was sort of more consistent. And even when I, if stuff is coming up, I can still feel that there's a real purpose to it all and I can just feel that, you know, awakening like is really is possible and it's happening and it's just really is, it's going on. And it's just like things don't disturb me like they used to. And, and I was just thinking about what, what happened? How did that happen? When, when did it happen? And, and what struck me was... The moment I decided that my spiritual life, if you like, who I am, my dedication to God is not segregated in time, <laughs> that every moment of my waking life really is a dedication to God, that I don't have me time, that I don't have time dedicated to something else other than God or spirituality. And yes, it can be things in form that I'm directed to because that's what I believe in but not giving the form any sort of credibility at all. <laughs> it's only helpful when the spirit really gives it to me. It's been a real like experience that with that, <laughs> this thought that <sighs> really hit me was it was like the end of doubting when I did that. It felt, it just feels so quantum, you know, that this is, this is it, that my life being dedicated to God, like, with no exception, doesn't matter what I do, is always like, it's really just checking in. Is this what's most helpful if for my awakening in this moment? You know, without exception, is this really what you want me to do, Spirit? No matter what it is, just having that out front all the time, no matter what, is mind blowing. And, and I don't know, it just hit me this morning when I was in prayer about this, and I thought, wow, that was it. This sort of switch was turned on that. It's really mind blowing, and it actually feels very quantum. It is like the quantum mm. because there's not a separation. Like my mm. life is not separated out; it's not segmented. It's all one, you know. And it just, it's magnificent, really. So know, that just really hit me this morning, and I, mm. that's, and I completely forgot about it. Actually, <laughs> here it is right there. Just feels like it dovetails from what you're saying. Mm. It's like the end of war, the end of doubting. It's just like it's love. That's it. It's just like living in this experience of, of quantum. <laughs> it feels like the quantum expansion. And so what do we do from here? What happened? <laughs> this is it. It's like the quantum expansion. It's like extending this. It's like sharing it. Because if you're not doing that, Jesus says very clearly that you're projecting. If you're not extending, you're projecting. So this is what we want to really come into this weekend, this total feeling of extension and expansion away from projection. It's where the questions do, do really become irrelevant or become very secondary, you know, it's like 
we've got to start asking better questions <laughs> uh, because the questions of form really are just keeping us, it's like separating our spirituality, our, our dedication to God when we're trying to get specifics right, line them up in form. So. Do you have something to say? Yeah. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Svava, if you maybe don't know, but yeah, I just felt like welcoming you all. Um, I was just sitting here and listening to David's profound words coming out of his mouth and just felt this, yeah, like my my heart just started expanding so much and I feel just so much gratefulness and love and at the same time so I'm so excited about this. I, I feel that it's... Mm -hmm. This is this retreat is for all of you. It's for me. It's for all of us. It's for the whole. And mm. it's uh, yeah. I'm just so honored to be here and so grateful for all of you being here. And uh, and I haven't seen this movie. We're gonna see tomorrow. And mm. so I'm yeah. I'm just very very excited. And thank you for being here. Mm. Mm. And kiss. Oh. Kiss, day. <laughs> <laughs> kiss on international kiss. International kiss day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. yeah, but I think too that the signs and symbols, I know a lot of you have been on a lot of our online retreats, but the symbols are everywhere. I, recently, um, Kirsten and Ricky were doing a tour down in Florida, and then um, I think it was uh, perhaps toward the end of that tour, Kirsten and I were talking, and she, you know, Kirsten, I think, went on a trip with me, a tour back around 2005, I think. So here it is, like, 13 la years later, she and Ricky are down in Florida. And she said on the phone, she said, it's so cool. I'm out here touring, and everywhere I go, everybody's like, we've been listening. We've been watching. We want to talk about it. About what? About being the dreamer of the dream. It was, imagine going to, stopping off at different places as you're going around to gathering and gathering. And the topic, the burning topic that people want to talk about is being the dreamer of the world of dreams. Mm. You know, which Jesus says, you are the dreamer of the world of dreams. No other cause does it have or ever will. You know, it's really, it's very quantum. It's just bringing that causation, that, that, responsibility where it has to come back to the mind, back to the dreamer. Call it the observer. You know, there's a there's kind of an, an observer, an egoic observer, observer where it it has its own egoic motives and beliefs and then what, what it observes, like uh, the, the famous uh, Schrodinger's cat experiment, is the, is the cat dead in the box? Is the cat alive? It's just pure potentiality mm -hmm. until it's observed, and then it's either dead or alive. But, but the mind of the perceiver through the ego determines dead or alive. There's, there is no, in the quantum field, uh, we don't have to think like that anymore. <laughs> that's, that's what the quantum field is. That's a line from Solaris. We don't have to think in terms of dead and alive. We don't have to think in terms of it ahead or behind or advanced and beginner or uh, all of the, the judgments, the comparisons that go on, those are all just uh, egoic judgments and they don't have any validity. And then there's the, the dreamer of the dream, the witness self we could call it, was just witnessing the dream in a pure state of non-judgment, you know, with Without, Jesus says in the Course, without judgment all things are equally acceptable. Mm. Mm. Isn't that lovely? He also says all things work together for good. There are no exceptions except in the ego's judgment. There it is again, witness self. You know, it, he says at one point, everything that seems to happen to me I ask for and receive as I have asked. Ah, witness self again. You know, and it just goes on and on. The teachings are so clear that, uh, that, that nothing occurs without my decision. That uh, there's nothing random. There's nothing that's 
lucky or fortunate or unfortunate that everything is exactly as it is. That's what let all things be exactly as they are is about. And the ego doesn't understand that. The ego is like, what? That can't even, what does that even mean? Because the ego doesn't understand that, that sense of being the dreamer of the dream. The ego invented an alternative to being the dreamer of the dream, and that's called the hero of the dream. The personality self is, the body is the hero of the dream. And this hero uh, seems to have all these uh, different scenarios and go through all these different experiences and we'll definitely see that in the movie tomorrow. But there is no uh, solution. There is, there is no uh, reality to being a hero of the dream. There's no validity to the personality self or the personal perspective. It's very human, but it's not real in the ultimate sense. It doesn't have any eternity in it. It doesn't have any pure divinity in it. It's just a construct. So I think that's going to help us as we go through this weekend because we want to go into the quantum experience. And as Jesus says, it's all you have to do is remove the obstacles. You have to remove the blocks in the mind, in consciousness, and then that quantum expansion experience is miraculous, but it's, it's ever-present. It's always there. It's very natural. It only takes a, oh, look at this, like, oh, I had something covering my, my eyes, so to speak, something blinding my mind from the truth. And that's the excitement, I think. So I was talking about excitement. We're feeling that mm. sense of adventure. We're all going on an adventure. Instead of a deep sea adventure, we're going into a deep mind <laughs> adventure together to release anything that we would start to see as an identity, as an external identity, as, uh, as something valuable in the world that we have to pursue or defend. I mentioned uh, Recently, I think uh, Diana was doing a series of gatherings, but it was Give Up the Desirable. She was on the Give Up the Desirable tour. <laughs> they weren't filling the stadiums, but actually, uh, <laughs> the thing about it is that's the best part, actually. You know, who cares about the stadiums, you know? I actually had some people years ago that would say things to me like, I had a vision, David, and I said, What was it? And this is, you were speaking in a huge stadium, and I thought, okay, well, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I just go where I'm invited, but I, I haven't been invited to any stadiums uh, to talk about these ideas. But here we are, we're digital, and we've all shown up together for it, and it's all for us. Like Swabha was saying, it's all for us, and, and that's coming into that experience that that transcends the, the personal, it transcends the interpersonal. If there's one dreamer, one dreamer of the dream, and our purpose is to for, forgive the world, that's what it means to forgive the world, is to realize that I'm, I'm dreaming. In fact, uh, there's one part in the Course where Jesus says, awareness of dreaming is the function of God's teacher. Isn't that amazing? Awareness of dreaming is the function of God's teacher. So, that's lucid dreaming. We're, our goal this weekend is to have an experience of, of lucid dreaming. And you can see by the smiles on the faces, you know, that, that that's, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's very wonderful. That's why I use smiling from ear to ear, because it's, it's an expansive, wonderful, wonderful experience. And it, it, there's a contentment with it too. Like, you, there's, a, a, there's a rest, a stillness, a calmness, a contentment in that. Like, ah, like, ah, uh, such a deep rest, because it's so expansive that, that there's nothing missing in it. It's, it's just a great reflection of, of our true, true identity. 
Well, we have rolled in and maybe we should go to the airwaves here. I just, I love hearing from all of you. We all do. We love hearing from you and, and uh, it's, we're just kicking it off tonight. <laughs> and tomorrow, all right, it's, a, it's about five hour movie session, but <laughs> we want to hear, we want to hear you're going to contribute to us moving into this uh, adventure together. So Jeff, <laughs> well check us, check us out for any kind of hands or anything that's, anybody that's waving your hands up. Yeah, it looks like Luna just raised her hand. Go ahead, Luna. Okay. Yes, well, I, um, I think the, the thing that really my heart desires is this unified awareness. Um, I think my mind is stuck somewhere because I have these uh, ultra-expansive experiences in one direction and then they go away and then they're in another direction. I, don't, I connect with source energy one morning and then or I, I have awareness of the power of projection, uh, or I, I have this metaphysical experience, and it varies. I, mean, I can't even intellectually connect the dots between them. They seem to be very, very different experiences um, and pointing in a different direction. So I don't know where. I mean, obviously, fear brings me back, forgets the experience, or, or the ego, ego thought just clamps down on the whole experience. So I just don't know what I'm missing, or what is it that I need to do to um, sort of enhance or, or facilitate this, this um, unified awareness, or just fear of like a. Um, continuing with really expanding one direction or another. I don't know if I'm making sense. It's nearly three o'clock in the morning here. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh. You can feel it. <laughs> it looks it now. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, that's beautiful. And, and again, thank you for pouring your heart out because you not only poured out like your deep metaphysical questions, but also your practicalities of, of kind of what you're dealing with. And, and, you know, I'm reminded of that Revolver movie uh, where there's a line in there, uh, the line is, where you don't want to go, that's where you'll find him. And uh, it's, it's really pointing to, as, as we go uncovering and exposing the ego, uh, there's certain areas where we have kept very dark and hidden, and maybe it's from a sense of, unworthiness or from kind of some deep root of, of just our, of the fear that's, that's there. Because um, it's like where we are pointed or directed uh, to go and take a step that will expand us beyond this ego comfort zone, so to speak, or this, this ego bargain, that's where the fear and the intensity can be the strongest. And I sense that you were starting to, when you were talking about um, one of your mighty companions, Alistair, um, it sounds like a very deep connection, like, like there's some kind of a wake-up assignment that's there. And so the first thing is, is that you're aware of that, like when we have someone that comes into our life and there's something inside of us that there's a recognition or there's almost like a feeling of activation or something um, uh, where something is brought together to lead to an expansion, lead to something that's much broader in awareness, a much bigger ex expansion in awareness. And then to just watch the ego thoughts come up about um, about talking with them or approaching them and, and being direct 
because um, it could be whatever. It could be a fear of rejection. It could be, uh, it could be a number of different things that the ego will throw up you know, as a defense against that. Even though there's already been some kind of a recognition and, and a sense of, oh, we have something there, maybe some kind of an assignment, whether it's a relationship or something that's there. So I think that's really good that you've identified that. It's like, it's more that like you are on the cutting edge, you are aware of that. And uh, I think that's also a good example about how as we follow the miracle, um, I remember in my, my parable I would have these whooshes of inspiration that would come, like Michael was talking about, like a, almost like a whack in the head, or I would just have this whoosh, a rush, of something that would come into my heart and I would just be with it and everything and then the ego would just throw in no, that you, they can't do that and, and then it would start to throw in reasons, you know, it would immediately try to diffuse the, the, the potential of it or the activation of it, it would try to diffuse that and I think that's a key that we're all being aware of in this, when we have very strong guidances and very strong intuitions, uh, we don't want to be too quick to dismiss those. Um, I found all along, even when I was back in, in university in graduate school, I would get these whooshes of inspirations and when I just took a deep breath and went with it, amazing miracles would just flower and unfold out of it and when I uh, would kind of like have a reaction and try to shut down or close it down. Uh, I, I noticed that as I tried to block it or close down the inspiration, um, I would literally make myself sick uh, through the attempt at closing it down uh, or sick or anxious or something like that. But I still took that as a learning device like, wow, I am really fighting against this uh, piece of guidance that's come through and then I would just notice that and eventually I began to just give way more and more to the guidance because it was so wonderful and there were so many miracles that just sprung forth from following those, those guidances and intuitions. And, and I think it's important just to keep that open mind like uh, as we come together, this miracles are very collaborative. And uh, Jesus says in the Course, the lonely uh, journey to God fails. Uh, and he's describing like the ego <laughs> planning its journey to God. It's got its own version of the journey to God, what it's going to do and everything. But it's a, the lonely journey to God fails because God is joy, because God is happiness, and God isn't loneliness, and you don't reach ha joy and eternal happiness through loneliness. That, that's never the means. The means uh, is up to uh, that the end. And in the end, the means and end are together. The, you know, we experience joy, 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 and then, you know, like that bumper sticker I always like, uh, life's a joy, and then you ascend. You know, I like that. I like that bumper sticker. So I think that you're, I'm glad that you poured all this out in your question because I do, I do feel that that's like when you say things are not lining up sometimes, I think you're right on the cutting edge with that particular uh, issue that you described there with Alistair. I think that there's, a, there's something there that's very, very important. Did you still hear me? Yes. Oh, sorry, yeah. So, um, soon after I met Alistair, you know, so, soon after I met Alistair and like the wake up activation started, Spirit said to me, and I didn't even know what Spirit did, I just was hearing someone talking to me then, that I need to change my subjective experience. And I guess my question now is, I've had so many different expansions that felt subjectively very different from other expansions and I just don't know what like the end game is other than intellectually or around unity with God like 
I saw I saw myself as the Christ for a split second, for sure. And I saw the whole world as love um, at one point. But the completely different, you know, as a subjective experience, is so different from one another. And so I guess that's my question, is what is the end game? I don't know where I'm going, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what's expected of me. It's like, maybe that is the journey, just like, you know, journey, just like just being in the dark for until I see the light. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I, we see your glasses. <laughs> well, it's beautiful because uh, you know, the very first words you said when you came on camera was, you know, I, I, I'm, I really want to experience the, the unified, uh, the unified awareness. And, and the thing about unified awareness or the quantum field or forgiveness or the happy dream is that there is no subject and object in, in that experience. So, it's beautiful. Again, your prayer is very much like Jocelyn's. You, you are just raising up and saying, my heart wants to know who I am. And, and that fits in with the guidance that you need to change your sub subjective experience. I'd say the way you're going to change your subjective experience is we'll join together this weekend and I'll show you that, that it's impossible, that there is no such thing as a subjective experience. And then we'll have this ah experience together because that's that's where it's all heading. So you're just praying. Your your prayer is very much like what we've we've started off with here. It's everybody's prayer. You know, it's beautiful. Hold on to your hats. Buckle your seatbelts, because I'd swear this movie tomorrow. Will be, oh wow. <laughs> there's no hat. There's no buckle your seats. No, there's no seats. There's no seats. Right. That's, there's no Kansas. You're giving the movie away, there's Michael. You're giving the whole movie away. <laughs> <laughs> You're given you the plot. <laughs> I'm trying to follow it. You say it's the worst movie ever. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then <laughs> that's why I brought it to Deanna. <laughs> Top five. And <laughs> well, that's not saying a lot. <laughs> There's no subjective viewing of this movie. <laughs> Worst, best, who knows? It's, yeah. We'll Very see. helpful for teaching purposes. Yes, yes. Thank you, Muna. Thank you. Okay, next up we have um, Heidi back. Go ahead, Heidi. Oh, she's can you hear? Yeah. You can hear? So, D David and everyone, what, what's coming up for me is I have these really deep, conversations with Jesus, I feel, or my internal teacher, and I get such great insights, and I'm in this loving place, and then something like flips, <laughs> and I become acutely aware that I am the creator of the world I see, and things are going wrong. I mean, it's like I can't make heads nor tails of anything. People dying, little little creatures dying in front of me, um, fires erupting, and I don't know what to do with all of it. Mm. It's, I don't feel I have that one mighty companion that I, I mean, I turn to Christ, that's the only one I can turn to because everyone in my proximity seemingly does not want to follow what I'm going with right here on this course, on my journey. Like it's just, I'm solo and I, but I am so grateful to you guys because of allowing us to um, come and join in this way. It it does a, it's like a touchstone for me mm. to help me. It like kind of writes my my mind a little bit. Um, yeah, so it gets really scary, and mm. I want love ha consistently. That's what I really am. That's the 
prayer of my heart. Beautiful. Yeah, that's I want it. love consistently. Yeah. Thank you, Heidi. That's, that's beautiful. I think what I'm sharing, what we will be sharing this weekend is, is a context for, for that shift of mind or shift of purpose. Uh, a shift from personal perspective to unified perspective. Uh, a shift of purpose, you know, how Jesus tells us the world was made in hate. Uh, but, but we have a new purpose now. And we're opening to the new purpose. It's like saying to the Holy Spirit, yeah, you show me the world anew. Show me your world. I, I am in full of devotion. Yeah. Yeah. I am in full yeah. devotion, but it's it's pretty tough out there. I yeah. guess. Yeah, out there, because there is no out there, but yeah. it, is, it appears out there. Yeah. Well, what's nice about the workbook, uh, um, for example, when you're going through the lessons and God did not create a meaningless world, Jesus says, practice with the specifics, you know, practice with the, the little creatures that are dying, you know. God did not create dying creatures and so they do not exist. God did not create this fire so it does not exist. You know, it's, it's active, actually actively practicing um, with denying the denial of truth. <laughs> uh, so, so if this world was made by the ego, as a denial of truth, then the denying the denial is, that's where he's taking us in and, and Jesus says, yeah, that's right, the ego made all the specifics, but we must use these specifics in our practicing. Mm -hmm. Just like if you had somebody who came to an AA center or, or a 12-step center, you know, just to, as they walk through the door, the, the drug addict or the alcoholic, just to kind of put your hand on their head and say, I bless you, you are a holy child of God, they oftentimes need to express the hurt that they feel, the struggles that they're going through in the companionship of, of those there. And then ultimately maybe even with a sponsor uh, so they can pour their heart out in a space of non-judgment and kind of empty their mind, empty their heart, empty their consciousness of, of all this that they felt. And uh, so I think that's good. I think that's, that'll be a big part of this movie experience we share tomorrow too because we're, we're going on that journey together where we're going to, we're going to see a lot of specifics. You're, you're sharing the specifics that you're perceiving uh, and you're dealing with and, and maybe even struggling with. Uh, you know, and that's what the whole movement of what we're going to go through is we're going to look at that from a broader context to start to show the, the reality of the unified experience and the unreality of the, the parts and the specifics. You know, because right now it, you can say, well, it seems like these, these things, this fire and these animals dying and different things, that, that they're there. They're there in my awareness. Uh, I'm aware of them. And I'm not at pure peace with that, so I want, Lord, I want to be taken into an experience. Show me the way. Show me how to see this differently. So I feel, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful prayer. I, I, I really feel this weekend is, is going to come through for that prayer. For that prayer. Thank you, Heidi. Okay, next up is uh, Melissa Fournier. Go ahead, Melissa. Um, hi, thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, well, kind of a two. Um, first, if you can expand in what is quantum. And second, I've uh, for the past weeks, I've been experiencing a lot of um, like pain and like, and I wanted. Kyle to support me somehow, hug me, like something like try 
yeah, I didn't know what to do with it. And, and, um, and so I went to somebody else's house and cried for an hour. <laughs> like, it felt agony. Uh, like, and I, I felt it. Like, I, I allowed myself to feel it. And I realized, you know, it wasn't for him to do anything for me. It was, like, between me and spirit to feel it. And, um, and my question is, like, I question myself, am I paying too much attention to the ego when I cry or like was that needed for me to surface that and and to express it so we can pass like the cloud so it can pass. Yeah, I sometimes say I feel like ah, out of control, you know, when I'm going through those and uh, yeah, like I, I'm doing the best I can, the best I know, praying, Holy Spirit, please heal my mind. Like, I feel all that, I'm like, okay, I, I imagine like I'm giving the darkness to the light. Please take this from me. And, uh, okay, yeah, here, I, this, I can't do this wrong. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, gosh, it's just been such a, oh. <laughs> it, it's, it's been a, uh, it's been tough. <laughs> yeah. It's been, uh, uh, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, yeah. Melissa. I think um, you're asking. You're the first one that's really asking that question. Here we're calling this quantum expansion, and you're coming right in with what is quantum, which is really helpful. Let's get it, get down to the basics. Um, most of us are familiar with the science. Uh, we have some awareness of it growing up even through grade school and high school and and most of us are aware of the idea of the scientific method of doing experiments and drawing conclusions from various experiments on many things of the world. Uh, you might say that just like psychology has progressed from um, uh, different schools of thought like uh, like uh, there's uh, uh, like B.F. Skinner and behavioral uh, focus and action, reaction, stimulus response. There's, there's different aspects of psychology. There's uh, Freudian psychology, there's humanistic psychology, there's transpersonal, transcending the personal psychology. That quantum is more aligned with transpersonal. Because quantum is science, but not only acknowledges consciousness, but sees that consciousness is central. And it's so central that basically quantum physicists, uh, there was one many years ago, decades ago, a quantum physicist who said, uh, there is no world. And, uh, you know, that was a quote from what? A scientist said what? Uh, there is no world. That's actually, Jesus says that uh, in, in A Course in Miracles. He, he actually says the same line that the quantum physicist said. And Jesus is known more historically as a very spiritual religious figure. And, and a scientist, usually, usually people think of that as the other end of the spectrum. So all quantum physics is really saying is that, that, that you, you, there is no world there is no experiment, there is nothing happening apart from consciousness. It's saying that everything is, is consciousness. Everything, without exception. And the quantum field is a, this connectivity where everything, no matter how far the star is away, or no matter how far an object is in the, in the cosmos, that there is a connection between even particles on Earth and particles from millions and billions of miles away, that they are absolutely connected. And the other thing I would say is that the old way of science was that you had, it's what Muna was talking about, there's a, there's a subjective experience, there's a, an experimenter, and then there's an experiment. And the experimenter is the one doing the experiment, and the things of this world are the th objects that the experimenter is using. But what quantum physicists discovered was 
that they, they did all these experiments, but they couldn't get the experimenter out of the experiment. They tried. <laughs> But when they got down to tiny, tiny experiments of subatomic particles, and they ran these experience, experiments, the tiny, tiny, tiny little subatomic particles appeared where the experimenter wanted them to appear. <laughs> and for a scientist, it's like, uh oh, that's, that, that undoes Newtonian science, that undoes this idea that there's an external world that we can learn about and discover, that there's a solid external world. Now, how that relates to what you've been going through is, as you begin to call on spirit, you're genuinely answering a calling, uh, what happens is the, the subconscious mind, the, the, the repressed mind, uh, which is the ego, will have to come up to be exposed. And when you pray the prayer for healing and this exposure starts, it can be radically upsetting, radically upsetting. And what you were sharing was, it's very common then to turn to your partner and say, I, help me, <laughs> you know, because that's part of the whole partnership idea, you know, we're in this together, Whatever I'm going through, I need your support, I need your help. And sometimes, spiritually, that the partner can be the one, and sometimes not. Uh, sometimes it's, the Spirit has, has another way to direct you, and did direct you. But it's a bit shocking when you are really praying for healing, and then this uh, darkness from the unconscious mind starts to come up. But all of us have gone through this. All of us have been shocked, majorly shocked. <laughs> And, and you go around the room here, people would say, oh, we've been shocked for years, <laughs> years, like decades, <laughs> people would say, shocked for decades. And because we don't really know what we're getting into, you know, we think, oh, I want to I wanna know love and oneness and joy, joy and happiness. Yeah. And so we don't realize, uh, there was also uh, someone who wrote in here uh, among, all, among all the questions and it was, it was great because it was, um, it was Paul, I think, and uh, I'll just read you this because this is what, this is what Paul was saying. Paul Frale, and Paul said that, uh, I recently decided to get serious and ask the Holy Spirit exactly why I was stagnating. Since I keyed it into my computer, as I was channeling it, I am able to transcribe his, the Spirit's answer below. And, and this is what the Spirit wrote. Paul, it is because you have given up. You think that the road to enlightenment is easy. And when it became hard, you gave up. What you should do is to begin your studies again by reading parts of the lessons to get back into shape. It will do you good. I think that by doing this, you will quickly resume the momentum you had. It will not be long before you will find yourself getting results. I am with you always. That is all for now. So that's the answer when we tune in. It's like sometimes we make a conclusion, and it could even be a conclusion like, uh, Enlightenment is easy. And then uh, we open up the prayer of our heart and say, I'm ready for healing. And then the unconscious stuff comes up and the ego goes, right, easy. <laughs> you know, but it's also uh, to be realistic. We always want to be authentic and realistic in our awakening process. And that's what I think you're, you're doing. And I'm glad to meet you. I've heard from... Uh, Kirsten talked about both of you very much from the trip to Florida, so it's great to, to see you both here online. I thought I might just add to that because I think it's a significant thing we've found because we do a lot of expression sessions all the time. <laughs> and one of the big things we find is, is when we allow the stuff up, it's really good to have a safe environment to do that. But one of the biggest things we find is the actual judgment of what's coming up. 
So it's the judgment of the judgment, if you like. So if you can just sort of pull back from thinking that it's a problem that this stuff is coming up or that it shouldn't be coming back around again because I express, you know, I had this up stuff coming up yesterday or for weeks now. <laughs> if you can just step back from that and just allow it and just try not to judge it as much as you can and maybe, you know, Kyle can help you there just sort of, oh, yeah, that's okay, just allow. <laughs> don't, don't um, you just don't need to judge it. It's okay, you know. It's one of the, it's one of the biggest things I seem to find with those that are around me just to say, this is, it's fine, there's not a problem. So, because the ego is always wanting, wanting to come in there. It's like the ego is getting undone, so it's going to come in and get at you whatever way it can. And one of the classic things is judging that there's a problem with this stuff coming up. But really, if you can just be with that, you know, and really be willing to give it over to the spirit, that's all you need to do. <laughs> we want to do more than what's actually required, if you like, of the, and that's all you need to do. Allow it up and give it over, you know, and just step back from that, so. <laughs> Okay, we have some more hands. Um, Lenny, go ahead, Lenny. Well, hi, everybody. Can't hear me, okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just wanted to... Where is she? I don't know, there's much going on for me right now, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to oh, right. kind of step out of unworthiness and yeah so i just find it hard to formulate a question right now i just had a very troubling evening and i really feel so squashed and yeah it just feels very very hard to see any joy at this time. <laughs> but I really felt that everything said this far has spoken to me and really is for me, so that feels really supportive but I had some really bad stuff coming up tonight and it kind of scared me Mm. Well, thank you. This is this is what we were doing if we were all together in a 
in a big barn in Sweden, we'd be having an expression session and you'd just come right out and say, here's what's going on and then just pour your heart out like this. Because that's, it is important when it feels unmanageable or it feels impossible to be able to, to speak it, to speak it up to someone and, and also for all of us to just join you in, in the prayer for for the strength, because it, it is such a deep walk of faith and all of us know that we have a prayer, ongoing prayer for the faith to be carried through, to come into our strength. And it's, it can be very uh, disheartening when we feel like we've, we, we have a situation in front of us and we can't seem to come, come back to our right mind, but, but we have found that be just doing what you're doing, opening up and, and, and sharing this, is the for always the first step. Because it counteracts this feeling like that you're all alone, that you are completely alone and, and all of us are here, really spread around the whole world here and, and joining with you and joining with you in prayer and feeling your, your call for support. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, we're almost at the top of the hour. We have about four minutes to go. Would you like one more question? Yeah, or do you want to... Does everyone feel we could, uh, we might be able to wrap it up in, in these minutes uh, because it's uh, it's a preparation time. Like I, I have done these online retreats where the, our first evening together is so precious because we just really can feel what's on everyone's heart. We kind of set the the prayer and the intention for all of us because we're going into this experience together and, and we want to hear what's going on. We'd like to hear from you to speak it up as you have tonight and also thank you for writing it up like that. And then uh, to just have a good rest and pr to prepare for what we're going to go into tomorrow because it's, it's actually we're just opening into an experience just to be led and be taken by the Spirit into an expansive feeling, an expansive experience and, uh, and the preparation for that, to give yourself time to prepare for that because also after that tomorrow then we'll, there'll be another night time that will come which, which can bring up all kinds of things too uh, as you go through these, that first experience with the movie experience but at that point, where our panel will be returning mm -hmm. uh, to to address things from our experiences of of facing those things, whether it's the things that uh, Nemo faces in the movie or whether it's things that we've all had to face. And also, because we've picked such a deep topic uh, this week, it's it's so deep. This uh, book that. Michael has uh, their quantum forgiveness, physics meet Jesus. It's it's very very helpful. I would say it's almost like a like a training manual in some ways, or a, a complementary manual that goes along with what we're exploring, um, because it gives so many examples from movies using scenes and and going into experiences that I've gone through and experiences from the movies, and it's a you can turn it sideways, you can see it's not a thick book, but it is packed. Uh, only 128 pages. It's only 128 pages, but it is <laughs> packed. I know when Diana was giving, feeding in the stuff for it, and they were, well, they were all putting it together. It's like this, this is a potent little book. It really is. Because it, the ideas are so deep that it's like it, 
it, it helps it's starting to help you digest what we're talking about tonight. So Michael was saying too, if this is the first time we've even thought of this or suggested this, but this particular week is so, so deep that if you did want to do some in-between mm -hmm. uh, reading to prime your mind for what's to come, uh, this, this is a way to do it. Yeah, we'll be reading some sections out of this book as well, so you could order it if you like and they'll probably put it in the chat. It's on the uh, Living Miracles site, the store of the Living Miracles site. So livingmiracles.org, you can click the store site and you'll go to Quantum Forgiveness. And it's available like in the paperback and the ebook. So we haven't quite got the distributors in quantum yet for the physical books. They can't quite instantaneously yeah. give you a paperback. But you can, or you can do that basically digitally with e the ebook. So uh, yeah, if you wanted to get the ebook, you could get that straight away. And we'll be reading sections out of it during the movie tomorrow as well. So maybe I've given part of it away. It's one of the mm. movies in this book. <laughs> 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 but there's seven movies, so... <laughs> And I just wanted to read, actually, just the end of the introduction. This is how powerful this book is. Just a few lines here that mm. are just wonderful. We are moving away from stories, linear perceptions, and grievances to a whole new way of thinking mm. in which we are whole and complete and innocent. It is truly thrilling to know that we are on the cusp of that right now. It is not something that we have to wait for. The truth is right here, right now, patiently saying, here I am. Awakening is indeed a glorious journey of miracles and discoveries, and I feel so honoured to be a full participant in it. <laughs> That's the introduction. <laughs> Okay, so down we'll, the rabbit hole. <laughs> we'll be going to Jeff now and then back to Laverne to uh, talk about some mind training tools. Thank you so, so much, much for Thank tuning you. in tonight. We love you all so <laughs> dearly. And uh, if you can't sleep, download the ebook and read chapter three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.